Really? Yeah. Right, this is a concrete chieftain. Uh, we've had it, I don't know, probably a year now. We bought it for 12 grand. Everyone keeps asking how much we pay for these things. Hey, okay, 12 grand for this, plus a bit of transport, I think it's probably 1500 to win. But there was one problem, obviously, we call it concrete chieftain, and that's because the whole back end was filled to the brim with concrete, parked as a gate guard for many, many years. Um, and I thought, well, how hard could it be to chisel the concrete out, chisel it all out, put an engine back in and get it going? Well, it was all going so well, we'll show you in the back. We got all the concrete out, and we did find quite a major problem, which we'll show you now. Right, so when we actually got all the concrete out of it, you can still see there's still a bit in there that we've still got to do. And uh, inside where the, the quill goes. But the biggest problem I, that I had not realised about the whole project is as we chiselled it out, we realised that when they obviously decommissioned it, rather than just filling it with concrete and being done with it, which you think that was enough damage, they gassed out the gearbox mounts for the flames, which is a major problem because the engine and gearbox are shimmed up because they're separate, they're not a pack. Everyone calls them an L60 a pack. It's not a pack, it's an engine and it's a separate gearbox. Um, so the engine uh, needs to sit dead dead in line with the gearbox, otherwise the, the clutch, as it were, or the spinning around on the back of the flywheel will be all out of balance and it'll smash the gearbox bearing pieces or, or the back of the crank. So that's, in other words, a major, major problem. So I thought, about making a bracket because this this point here where the engine basically the engine bolts down on these two points here and it goes in that hole there so we know that these points are still original and i dare say in within tolerance so with seb's chieftain that we're currently restoring at the minute um, we've got the engine out so what i'm going to do is make a bracket to mirror from these i'll be able to bolt this bracket to here which will which will then, I'll knock the concrete out of there, hold that in the right position. I'll bolt that to my bracket and it'll hold that dead in the right place at the right height. So then I can just weld up to it and then weld them in, weld that piece back in and I know I'll be bang in the right place. And fingers crossed, that will solve the problem. I mean, some of you in the comments are going, oh, that will never work. Well, we will find out. But that's the plan, and obviously the wiring um, that all got needle gunned and not needle gunned, jackhammered. So all this wiring here goes to the gearbox. Uh, that went to the fan. That goes up along there. Now, although it looks in a pretty poor state, which it is, um, believe it or not, there are marks on the wires, and it will just be a slow job of just going off the tags and uh, soldering them back up. And I think the plugs, believe it or not, aren't actually that knackered. So that shouldn't be too hard to mend. I've got a new, I'll say new, it's not new, I've got nothing new. I've got a uh, engine oil tank. I've got a decent engine and a decent gearbox to go in. And obviously we'll try and make it, paint it, make it nice. I'm not gonna bother with the donkey engine uh, or the GUE, whatever you wanna call it. And the reason I'm not is because there's too much uh, taking out the turret regarding the gun kit has all been removed on this a lot of it so I'm not even going to bother with that or attempt to uh, attempt to put any of that in because um, really without a working gun kit it's pretty pointless putting the donkey engine in. I know people go, oh you're supposed to start the main engine off the donkey. I've done it for years without, friends of mine have done it for years without, we've never had a problem. So uh, I'm just going to ignore everyone that says that and carry on and do it anyway. Um, so it should make a usable vehicle. That's the plan, out of scrap, because bearing in mind, it's only cost 12 grand for 1,300 quid to move it. I don't think it's gonna cost a great deal to put those bits of plate in. And I've got an old engine and box out of a previous tank we had that I think I can repair, which owes us very little. So can we get this main battle tank working for under 20 grand? That's the goal. Let's see if it's possible. Right, we'll show you the rest of it while we're here. Oh, it's a bit windy, but we'll show you inside while we're here. It ain't, it ain't the nicest, is it? Just 
for this hatch work. So this is it inside Concrete Chieftain. As you can see, it's absolutely mint. Um, the accumulators, nitrogen accumulators, have actually uh, been left for so many years. They've lost all the gas and, and the guns come back. So it's it's in the position now as, as if you'd fired the gun, it's recoiled, which is the reason why we tell people never stand behind the breech in one of these because you should have a lock, which Seb will show you now. This would actually hold the breech block up. Um, and even then, to be fair, I don't like getting behind them because this is incredibly heavy. And if you were behind here when that just slid back, you're going to be crushed. Um, so that's a good example of showing you why they're so dangerous in the turret. Um, it's a bloody heavy breech block, that is. I may as well just see if it traverses and we'll try and get it. It's a good work out this. This is a good work, to be fair. Considering it been parked up so long it actually don't turn too bad can everyone see like the bow wave the mark where the water came up in it so obviously this was totally flooded so this is a little look inside the driver's compartment and you can see where the water damage has got in you can see where the water's been been literally left a tide mark on the side there so everything has been underwater under here so i can imagine that's not done the electrics much good whatsoever so it'll be interesting to see what works on this thing you're absolutely fine keep going a little bit more be brave be very brave <laughs> Serious right, well, we're back in the workshop, and this is Seb's Chieftain, which we're going to use as a template. I used some cardboard and the uh, rubber hammer to knock out an impression on the cardboard to give us the right measurements. I did this both sides, and then I went and found a piece of thick plate and got the gas out and gassed the bits out. Is it an Aldi middle aisle special, Jay? Bad mechanic always blames his cheap tools. So what does a bad mechanic do when he's a bad tool as well? Oh, it's always the tool's fault. That's the main thing to remember. <laughs> Sorry, I'm right, anyway. Today, we'll be good enough. Just need to get the holes drilled out in dead the right place. We've got our pattern to the engineering shop. Let's go. Right, well, I've left the plates with the engineers. They're going to drill the holes out in dead the right place. I've also left some sets of brake discs off the Chieftains to be skimmed while it's with them as well. The lads reckon that the, the bits and pieces will be ready sometime next week. So it'll be quite interesting to see if we can actually weld these um, brackets back in the right place. And when we put an engine and a gearbox in, it actually starts to line up. I've also got to get the engineers to make me up some shims so I can actually shim the engine up properly. Anyway, thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next video.